And we are back. Thank you for staying with us. This is still why in the morning, being Entrepreneurship Tuesday, we want to dive into the first conversation of the day. And today we want to take a focus on uh, entrepreneurship in education or education entrepreneurship. And for this particular topic, we have an expert joining us. This is Professor Evans uh, Kerosi. He is the executive director at Equip Africa Institute, uh, who is at the helm of initiatives of enhancing educational and economic outcomes across the continent. And he's also a PhD holder uh, in commerce with a specialization in economic administration and financial management. You are most welcome, Professor. Thank you very much. Great to have you. So um, let's start by you explaining to us what exactly uh, it is that you do at Equip Africa. Yeah, my name is Professor Kerosi Evans. I'm the executive director of Equip Africa Institute. Mm -hmm. Equip Africa Institute is the TVET arm of Mount Kenya University. And uh, my responsibility is to coordinate all the centers of Equip Africa Institute. That is, we have one center in Kitale, we have another branch in Nakuru, we have a branch in Kisi, we are in Mombasa, we are in Malindi, we are in Nairobi, and we are in Thika. Mm -hmm. So my responsibility is to ensure compliance and also ensure the growth of the institute. Okay. So compliance and the growth of the institute. Um, what is it now that you have that leadership position in, um, in education? You know, what would you say is missing in our education when we look at um, entrepreneurship especially? What is, it that, what is that gap that is there? Uh, that is a very good question. I'll, uh, first, I'd like to indicate that uh, for a long time in Kenya, the education system has been focusing the old traditional way of training students or graduates for the white collar job. Mm -hmm. But we can all agree that nowadays the white collar job is not, they are no longer there. Hence, the need to shift from the old traditional way of training to the skills-based training, which is the TVET arm. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are now moving into the TVET arm to fill in the gap which is there, the skilled labor. Okay. Actually, that's the a, that's a gap mm -hmm. in our education system. So the skilled labor the skill. is, the, is the gap that has been there for a long, for a long time because uh, we've also had employers saying that they get graduates who uh, have passed, you know, first class, but now applying the skills is a problem. Or you get someone who's not been to the industry, you know, has not had attachment, an attachment, in the industrial attachment or internship. So when they get to work, they, they're out of touch with what's happening in the industry. Um, uh, with what they learned. What they learned is different to what is actually happening in the industry. So now you're coming in as the Tivet institution is now giving the skills to these young people, right? Very true. Mm. The Tivet, the Tivet in Kenya nowadays, we train students to have skills which they apply once they graduate from the institution. Mm -hmm. The practical skills when you move out of the institution, we look at you to fill in the gap which exists of providing the skilled labor, which are in most of the countries, like now again, when you look at uh, the Western countries, like we are talking now, actually, that's what is trending at the moment. Mm -hmm. In that uh, when you go to countries like Europe, there is a very huge gap because of the aging population of Europe. So we are having migration of labor from Africa to the Euro European countries where the skilled labor is so much in need. Mm -hmm. And actually, even us as Equip Africa Institute, we have an, uh, an arrangement with one university in Germany where we are training health assistants. Then uh, they go to Germany to do the, the internship and of course, as they continue the, with their studies. Okay. So it's very clear that the demand for the skilled labor is pretty high in the Western countries. But of course, when you look in Kenya, 
we have labor in, in, it's here in abundance. Mm -hmm. So the best thing we can do is to have the labor being transported okay. or exported to Western countries mm -hmm. where it's much needed. Okay. So our advantage is, the, is that we have a lot of young people as compared to the European countries. So they have a gap in skills and we have the people who can get the skills right here because now the problem in Kenya is the lack of job opportunities but the opportunities there the only thing that is missing is the skills and that's where institutions like yours come in to give the training right True. So should we have more of such because you have talked about um, your partnership with a German company you know where they're going a healthcare company right? a university a university yeah Okay, where they're going to do internships. So um, do we need to have more of that in the country? Um, institutions having partnerships of that sort so that um, once they have been trained, once they have been equipped with these skills, then they do not stay with these skills. They're able to use it to get op to opportunities because another gap I... I might think there is, is there now uh, the linkage to the right opportunities. You may have the skills, but you do not know how to uh, connect with the right people. Uh, very true. You've put it in a very articulate way. Mm -hmm. When we start looking at uh, the whole process, the first thing we look at is identifying the gap. And what's the gap? Mm -hmm. The gap is we have a lot of labor, skilled labor in Kenya, Actually, we sometimes we don't, we despise. For instance, uh, if you are talking of a plumber, carpenter, etc. Mm -hmm. Many times in Kenya, we look down at them. It's like a low, a low, a low, a low paying jobs. Mm -hmm. But when you go to Europe, you know most of the European countries are having an aging population. The youths are fewer. Mm -hmm. So there is that gap. Now, once we've known there is that gap, the second question which comes in, how do we access that market? Mm -hmm. That's the biggest challenge. True. Not only Kenya, actually in the entire Africa, nowadays most of the countries are trying to see the, the youth trying to move to the Western to look for job opportunities. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in the process, we have so many youths being misled. Others go to a very wrong place. You remember the cases like the cases we have in um, the Middle East. In the Saudi, Saudi yeah. Saudi cases. We have issues coming every morning, ev almost every month. Or mm. Then now, our responsibility as a training institution is to establish a good linkage mm -hmm. with the hosting countries and ensure if the students, we prepare the students from here, if we're exporting the labor from here to the other side, we must ensure they are safe. And also, it's also the responsibility of the government to put in place good policies to protect mm. their citizens when they're moving out. Okay. For instance, now we've been talking too much about the Saudi cases. Mm -hmm. In Saudi, we, it's not only Kenyans who, are, who go to over so. the skilled labor. We have so many Philippines uh, working in Saudi Arabia, but they never have same the problems. same cases. No, it's they don't. It's different for them. It's very different, actually, because their country has set very clear policies mm. to protect and guide them. Okay. So it's also a responsibility of our government to come up with uh, clear policies to govern and guide on how the student can, our graduate mm. or our youth can get opportunities in other countries. Other countries. Yeah. What such policies would you suggest that the government should put in place to ensure the security and uh, protection of the exported labor? Uh, the first one, of course, is the government has made the right, po the right, the right move by creating the foreign affairs docket, oh. docket which looks as for the people working on the other, on the other side. But uh, it needs to be strengthened mm -hmm. so that uh, in any country, if we are talking of Saudi or German or any other country, we have our representatives in those countries, the embassies. So these embassies need to negotiate with the receiving countries. They agree we are getting people on board. These are the rules, blah, blah, blah. Very clear. Then they communicate them back. Mm -hmm. Then the country gets no. The second policy I think the government needs to look into is to ensure we have these agencies. Allow me to use the word the agencies. Yeah. The agencies, these are the people who identify the gap, 
they want to exploit it without, of course, getting the, the welfare of the youths who are moving to the side. What happens? They come in, they strike a, a deal, they find opportunities in the foreign countries, mm -hmm. they come here, they advertise, of course, they have the licenses, they put you in the flight, you go to the other side, they get a park, they get a commission, then from there, you're they don't your, care. You're on your own. You're, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. That's the main problem. So we need to also to have policies to govern. If you're an agency, you take responsibility of any youth you are trying to export to any foreign and country. country. Okay. And you, you should be held responsible. Sometimes it's very disheartening when you, you watch on our televisions, parents coming and saying, okay, my daughter is in, in trouble, is trying to cry to the government to, to intervene. And they say, we've tried to reach out to the agency. They're they, not responding. They're not, they're not responding. responsive. They're not responsive. Mm -hmm. And some of them, they're too casual. And here we are talking about the human life. Exactly. And remember, the youths are moving to the other side in search of job opportunities to meet maybe their basic needs and support. And support their families. Their families, back here. yeah. Yeah, it's quite unfortunate. And most, some of the cases where you find that the family has to transport a dead body from such True. countries to back to Kenya, you, you had your, your relative alive and well, and they're coming back uh, mm. lifeless, which is quite sad. So these are some of the policies that the government needs, needs to, to implement to make sure that um, even as our workforce goes out there, they are protected and they are safe, they are well, even as they contribute to our economic growth and whatever True. that they do. So now, um, let me ask you, in terms of entrepreneurship, uh, looking at how you are training um, and impacting skills on uh, the young people that uh, are at your institutions. How does this translate to uh, empowering them to be entrepreneurs? Because this is also another space that they can look into. So how do, do you empower them to look into entrepreneurship? Uh. One of the conditions, and uh, you know, as TIFET, we do have uh, our examining body is SIDAC. Mm -hmm. SIDAC is a, an equivalent of NEC. Actually, in Kenya, we are used to talk of NEC. Yeah. But now we have moved to SIDAC, is the one which assesses the TIFET institutions. That's what we call the competence based training, it's the one which does the assessment. One of the basic competence units they've put in place is mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is one of the basic mandatory unit you have to do, okay. irrespective of the career you've chosen. Mm -hmm. The second one is digital literacy. Amazing. Digital literacy is also to en enable you, you know, we're in the digital world. Mm -hmm. So it will enable you to be able to interact, uh, decode information from the e the e information online, be able to network and connect with the entire world <coughs> or with whoever you are you are working with mm -hmm. and again it makes you easy to work with the, the latest technology okay. available in the market all right yeah. so this uh, set there intentionally to empower them to um to be adaptable to the evolving space the technological space at least with the digital uh True literacy there and the entrepreneurship now let's talk about the entrepreneurship bit of it um what what is it in that course that really enables them to be entrepreneurs what areas should they look into when they're looking to venture into entrepreneurship especially uh, basically the the unit of entrepreneurship gives you the basic skills on what you need to start a business on what you need to run a business and how you do the accounting and of course the op available opportunities mm -hmm. and how you become compliant <coughs> in terms of the returns mm -hmm. and the risks of you face when you're joining the business. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah. So these are the basics that one needs yeah. to to know about. Are you okay telling us, just taking us through a bit of that? I know it's a whole unit. We can't unpack it in one conversation. Mm. But uh, for someone who's looking into being an entrepreneur and maybe uh, is not able to join a Tivet institution, what are some of the necessary uh, basic things like uh, being compliant and all that? What do you need to meet to be an entrepreneur? <clears throat> maybe uh, the first thing we need to look at it's not a must you go through TV to become an, an, an entrepreneur to mm -hmm. start with the most important thing is you must have some skills you must see an opportunity and I'm happy to indicate <clears throat> to indicate that uh, the Kenyan government now is has started doing what they call recognition of player learning mm -hmm. under the recognition of player learning is a situation where you have skills, but you don't have the certificate. Okay. Like the Chuakali, the, the Chuakali industry. Mm -hmm. These guys, they are well skilled. Very but true. Uh, when you look at this person going to look for a job somewhere, he doesn't have any certificate to present. So the government has started uh, the recognition of prior, prior learning. Mm -hmm. So if you have the skills, you have the knowledge, now you want to get to, into business. The first thing, we've, when you go through the TVET um, or go through the university, we equip you with the knowledge mm -hmm. what pertains to that area. Okay. For instance, if it's carpentry, you've, you have the skills. If it's plumbing, you have, you the, have skills. the skills. If it's uh, uh, POTT, that's perioperative theater technology, you have the skills. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, lab technology, you have the skills. Mm -hmm. But now, there must be a, con a, a connection. The skills you have, probably you are not going to be employed. That's the biggest challenge. Because you don't have the certificate. Yeah, you have the certificate. You walk from one office to another office. You come to learn that there are no jobs. Mm -hmm. What happens? You need to start your small business. Then you need to run, to run your business. For instance, we've trained you on hairdressing. Mm -hmm then you cannot continue to be employed, you need to start your business. Then what do you need to do first? First, you must understand the skills which you have. Mm -hmm. Then second, you need to know which environment, which market are you working in? So, you, so that you can position yourself, uh, the market, you identify your market. Three, you must also know the location of your business. You may be have, having very good skills, uh, the knowledge, the equipment and everything, but the location can give you a, a big problem. problem. Mm -hmm. So you must know where are you going to locate your business to enable you get the highest returns. Three, you need to know where, how are you going to access the, fund, the financing, the funds. And as we talk nowadays in Kenya, funding or finance is the biggest challenge to the young and the, the youth. They have the knowledge, they have the skills, they have everything, but they lack the funding. And what makes them have this challenge? You find uh, the banks, they need a collateral security. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're moving in, poor youth. You're you just starting out, you know, business, life and everything. You have nothing. They tell you, okay, can we see your history, banking history, the credit history? You have none. None. Actually, you just uh, left high school. <laughs> You've left college. Mm -hmm. Or you're out here. Uh, even sometimes surviving becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Then how do you translate your... So in our training, is you equip the students with the knowledge on how to access what are the available opportunities out mm -hmm. here. Okay. How to get, get the, the funds. funds that you need. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> because here now you have to tell them, some of them, again, they make this big mistake of jumping into these apps where the interest rate is too high. Mm -hmm. You start a small business, uh, the following morning, they come knocking, they take everything, plus your, your principal capital. Everything that you, you have. You go negative, mm -hmm. and then you start from zero. So it's important you, this, the youth get to know where you are going to source the funds from. What are the terms? Because, mm -hmm. uh, sorry to say this, so many business have come for money lending mm -hmm. 
They, you see them being advertised almost. Yeah, the mobile ma money lending platforms. Yeah, almost everywhere. And even some, they come to you trying to sell. They're in business. Of mm -hmm. course, from their end, they're making business. Mm -hmm. they, they don't want to know you're going to succeed or not, but they want you to take the loan. If you don't, they recover the... Uh, As your assets, everything. Your assets you and everything. With them, they, they've made money on their side. But on your end, you're on the losing end. Mm -hmm. So it is important for the youth to know where they are going to get the source of fund. That's the biggest challenge. That's it true. needs to be secure. And if you are taking a loan, get to know the interest rate and the repayment terms so that they are in your favor. And then, number the second thing they need to know once you get into this small business, it's sometimes a bit unfortunate mm -hmm. that uh, we have competing needs. Competing needs in that you've taken a loan, you're supposed to use this money to run the business. Then uh, the other side, you are not able to ma ma meet your basic needs. Yeah. Now, you are tempted. To use the money from pit the of business. It. Actually, not all of it. You start pit of it. Say, can I take... The moment you take, you've already taken, uh, eaten your, your, your margins. Mm. And if you're not careful, you're, you start eating even your capital. So financial discipline is key in any business to succeed. Mm -hmm. You Can you see, we bought a leaf from the Indians, the way they do. They're very successful in business. Mm -hmm. They know how to, they are very disciplined in terms of finances. Okay. And here in Kenya, again, you see, sorry to give an example, like uh, the Somali groups. They know how to come together, bring the funds together, give one, you start the business, they trust you, then you're able to grow the business, get it back to the family, and the family grows. Yeah. This is a concept, actually, which we're missing mm -hmm. in, 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 in our Kenyan society. When you look at the youth, we do not have groups, even families, mm. never come together to pull their resources together so that and we... support one person and one believe person. that, you know, is able to yes. get and it going. Get it going. And uh, <clears throat> if you are able to move on, you also invest back. What happens is, in our country, very few communities are able to, or very few families are able to support one to get into business and see him grow or see on behalf of the, the business. And if they end up supporting you, what happens is once you grow, you forget the mm -hmm. people who supported you. So we break that on. Uh -huh. So the finance, financial discipline is very important okay. in any business. So you must know what funds belong to the business and what funds belong to you. So no, no mixing of mixing the business the two, and personal That is the biggest finance. challenge. And I can assure you most of the small-scale businesses in Kenya die or close down in the first and second year mm -hmm. uh, after because being there because of a number of problems. Okay. So that's, that's, a second, that's the first issue is about the finances which we are looking at. Mm -hmm. Then again you'll come, okay, what are the available opportunities? Where can I invest this money? I have these funds. So you must carefully select where you're going to invest mm -hmm. the funds. The reason for this is pretty simple. One, there are some ventures where you can invest. The, profit, the returns on the profit margins are high. And the many times where the margins are high, the risk also is very high. Mm -hmm. So you must, <coughs> you must learn how to cope, uh, balance between the risk and uh, the returns. And the returns. Then <coughs> again, there are those ones which the business which need heavy capital investment. So you have to weigh this amount, my, uh, the amount of money I'm able to access. <coughs> and with this one, I can only invest in such and such a place. Uh -huh. So you must relate where you are going to invest with the funds which you have. Mm -hmm. So there must be a clear link. You may have a very good 
opportunity to invest in a given area, but you don't have the funds. If you go in, you'll be frustrated and the business will collapse. Okay. You may be having good funds, but invest in a wrong business. Uh -huh. Then again, you get in trouble. You not, you not succeed. Then again, another area where we need to look into is the market. Mm -hmm. You have the product. Yes, you've gone to the opportunities. We can tell you we have the e-commerce. You can go to agribusiness. You can go to solar and energy. Renewable, what we call the renewable energy. You can go to waste management. Mm. Like now we are talking, <coughs> we have a lot of waste. So if you can come up with a bit of innovation, you can uh, move in and identify patent, whatever you, you've come up with you, of your innovation, and then you, you move in. So that one again, you need to to to, to make uh, to make uh, to make to make uh, follow that uh, follow that line. Okay. Now here you have a product. Where do you sell it? Where is the market? We start with agribusiness. Agribusiness actually is one of the <coughs> the simplest to start off. For those people who are coming from the rural areas, it's mm -hmm. easier. It needs a little capital, and you need to move in. Mm -hmm. But the biggest challenge you have in the agribusiness is. Uh, the products, where do you send your, sell your products? Mm -hmm. That's the biggest challenge. Thanks, we are, we are having the e-commerce nowadays. You can go online, try to sell online. Again, this one needs the technology, the digital literacy we are talking about. You are able to link about this. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, <clears throat> if our youth are empowered and they get to know the existent of the market in the, in the foreign the foreign market, especially for the agribusiness, then they're able to. Export. You can you can actually make very good money, especially okay. for organic farming. Mm -hmm. You can make very good money out there. There's already market out there. There's already market. Again, okay. again, here yeah, the challenge we have. I don't know what we can do as a country to save our youth. When you identify this market, foreign market, mm -hmm. we have the middleman coming in. <coughs> <laughs> yes. And the once they come in, what happens? They exploit the youth. The youth, the youth will do the don't work. And they get the profits. They get the profits. Mm -hmm. Our youth again go lamenting and that is a problem. And I think here what again... What can be done about it? <coughs> in my opinion, the government again needs to step in. Mm -hmm and try to create a conducive environment for one to do the business. All right. And even negotiate for the foreign markets where the products can be exported to. Okay. And then we can get good returns. Mm -hmm. And uh, we stop crying of unemployment. It solves. Yeah. It a lot of the problem. It solves a lot of the problems. Okay, great. Yeah. This this is amazing. And um, <coughs> now, finally, where is the place of emerging technologies when we look at entrepreneurship with the emergence of AI? We have IoT. We have a lot happening. So how has it interrupted this entrepreneurship space? The AI, the artificial intelligence, I always tell people it's, a, it's the elephant in the house, mm -hmm. especially for the people who are a little bit Older. aged. Mm -hmm. The AI is revolutionizing almost in every sector, it not is. only the youth. You come to the education sector, the AI is there. You meet it. Uh, how does it affect the AI, the, the education sector? We used to, when you were doing your master's to do the project, you, nowadays, you go to chat, chat GP, GTP, it will give you the project. It, yeah. it, in a fraction of a minute, it will generate the information, give you, you're able to move on. Ask even the questions, they can respond, they prepare. So even the learning, the education sector is affected. Uh -huh. You go to uh, the, the law, you saw the app, they created, the, you are calling it Wakili. Mm -hmm. You feed in, it will tell you everything. Give you all the information. Medical, the same thing. Now, in the business, how is the AI changing the entire the business the business world? Mm -hmm. One, the AI has made 
the marketing through the e-commerce more easier. Mm -hmm. Two, the production. They are using the current technology to produce, the, to do the production. In the process, we end up having high returns as compared to the old age. Mm -hmm. Kindly try to have a flashback during our days when we used to produce even as daily farming, the way we used to do it. Mm -hmm. It was too traditional, use your chamber and ATC. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, they are very specific. The AI is very specific, actually. They can even use the AI to spray the, the pesticides, the watering, the irrigation, ETC. It's changing the entire way, the way production is being done. That's mm -hmm. in the agribusiness. Yeah. When it comes to these other services, mm -hmm. how has the AI changed the, 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 the environment? Simple. Do I need an accountant? An accountant? I don't, I don't need. I start the business, I, st I have an app, mm -hmm. I ask the AI, uh, you feed in, it will give you the, uh, the, the profit. It does the work, you it does everything. personal assistant. It's, it is a personal assistant, I want <laughs> to do anything, it reminds me, it's cutting down on cost. Mm -hmm. To me, as an entrepreneur, it's cutting down on cost. But on the other hand, it's doing away with the employment opportunities, which means those opportunities I could have hired a personal assistant to take care of me because of AI, I don't need that personal assistant. Mm -hmm. But on the positive aspect, my profit margin is going to increase because the cost of production is going down. The AI just installed it once. The access is on up. Once I know, I keep running. That's it. So running my uh, human resource, I don't need mm -mm. the human resource officer. Mm -hmm. So you see, Basically, with the incoming of AI and the changing of the technology, the cost of production is going down. Mm -hmm. And as the cost of production goes down, the profit margin go up. Go up. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the employment opportunities also go down. Mm -hmm. So, but <laughs> we, I don't know how we when you argue it with uh, <laughs> those that are pro AI, they say when you adapt to uh, opportunities now in the AI, whatever opportunity it is creating, uh, when you in the coding space and all that, then it creates opportunities in that space as much as it's taking opportunities uh, from you know some jobs like personal assistants. But if you can make yourself effective with through the technology, then you're still relevant in the industry. <laughs> I, I agree with you to a given extent, mm -hmm. but uh, it, there is a small variation. How many, how many opportunities do you avail using the AI as compared with the tradition? Of course, the tradition is. A, a bit so, so that variance is, that's what we are talking about. Of course, the AI, you need some, some workforce, uh, you are creating some job opportunities, but at a smaller scale as, as compared, compared to, to the traditional workforce. That's, that's the point I was raising. Okay, so yeah. it has its own ups, but it also has its lows. Now, again, like but now, uh -huh. when you look at uh, technology, we are talking about technology. Yeah. What has technology done to most of the businesses? I request you have a just a simple flashback, a flashback of mm -hmm. some of the big companies, not even the small companies we are talking about, even the big companies. Mm -hmm. they said, this company used to be called Kodak. I don't know if you know the Kodak. Kodak, Kodak. The when I grew up, uh, huh? you know, during my time, <laughs> taking a photo, mm -hmm. you were to wait for a photographer to come. <laughs> you invite him, he has to come at a specific day. He'll come, take a photograph, then uh, As you the, the negative the negative the negative the negative you <laughs> go with it you wait for it actually for <laughs> the entire film has to come to an end and then you wait for your photo for maybe one week two weeks yeah <laughs> Zika it, Oshu, i don't even know I how know they were being cleaned <laughs> but now yeah. with the changes of this technology where is kodak kodak disappeared mm -hmm. why did, did it make any mistake no it didn't make any mistake but Okay, but, but they didn't cope. They didn't cope. They didn't adapt with the changes. changing technology. Mm -hmm. So they were left behind. Okay. Another good example is our country here in Kenya. We used to have poster. Mm -hmm. And again, during my time, <coughs> I'll comfortably tell you, when you are writing a letter, 
maybe you're in high school and writing a letter home. You have to write a letter and then post it, it had to go, wait for the feedback, etc, etc. Yeah. Poster was one of the uh, corporate, uh, corporation which was making a lot of profit in Kenya. Oh. Uh -huh. And I remember even we had gone to the poster, the poster saving. I remember I'm, I'm having that bit of poster saving. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the change of technology, where is poster? <laughs> it's not it's there. It's really gone down. It's yes. gone down. So even the small business we are getting in, whatever area or sphere you you you're working, keep in touch with it technology technology and the changing trends mm -hmm. for you to remain afloat you must do that mm -hmm. if not you'll be pushed out of the market for not doing any mistake but At all nothing that has been caused by you but yeah. only the, the 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 only fault will be not adapting yeah. to the technology and most uh businesses nowadays are either technology driven or tech you know True. entirely um, technology based so mm. this is the new thing what um would be your final um parting shot uh, as you talk to young people out here in, in terms of getting into a entrepreneurship or the opportunities that you're talking about uh in other markets outside the country how can they tap into that i i, the, I will start first by telling the youth we do have good opportunities. I know most of them feel uh, like they're at a fact of despairing because mm -hmm. you finish, you have very high expectations, you are not able to secure the job. Mm -hmm. My message is simple and clear. There are so many opportunities that are existing out there. What you need to do is to have your skills and identify the opportunities which are existing out there. Then find a way of moving in to secure those opportunities. And the only way you can do or you can access these opportunities is to get access to information and the right information. If you have the right information, mm -hmm. you'll get to know which opportunities exist and at what point are they existing and what is the cost mm. and what are the risks mm -hmm. then you need to move in then secondly i'll just encourage them to consult as much as possible before they go to the investment in the sector where you're moving in it's good to do some bit of research mm -hmm. actually one of the units we offer in the is research methods they enable the student to first investigate the industry where you are going to invest or any business you are going to do you will get knowledge mm -hmm. and with that knowledge it will enable you have an understanding what you are what you are expected to do in that market so my advice is one don't be discouraged two there are good opportunities out there three make the right decision by first investing or doing what we call due diligence on the business you are going to involve in or mm -hmm. whatever you want to do mm -hmm. so that you have the right information before you jump in okay that will wow. be my information wonderful thank you very much professor thank for you. the amazing insights that you've shared with us would you uh want to give any social media handle that people can reach you through or maybe the institutions may i do you have any social media handles that people can use to reach you in case of uh, anything. Uh, no, at the moment I don't have any social media. Being in the institution of higher learning. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Sometimes we. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, no way. But uh, we are at Equip Africa Institute, mm -hmm. at the Tibet arm of uh, Mount Kenya University. If you need any information, and maybe if you want to be to be guided appropriately in terms of business and, entrepre and entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and training. We invite you to visit one of our institutions and then they'll reach us. We'll give you the right, the right okay. information.
All right. Thank you yeah. very much once again. That has been Professor uh, Kerosi uh, Evans, the Executive Director at Equip Africa Institute. And that's where you can get them at any branch of um, the university and you'll be able to get all the information that you need. We've been talking about entrepreneurship and how education plays a role in that and the many opportunities that are there, not just in Kenya, but markets abroad. But what you need to do is do your due diligence and uh, get enough uh, mentorship and uh, research in the area that you want to venture in if you want to get into entrepreneurship. I hope, hope you've taken something from this conversation and you can get more of that on YouTube once this interview has been uploaded here on Y in the Morning at Y254 channel. That's also where you can interact with us. We're going to take a short break and then Brand Sakwa will be coming up next with an interesting conversation. So stay with us.